And we welcome you to Journey into Faith, brought to you every week by the Bible Speaks in Laconia. So great to have you with us for the next half hour. The message tonight is going to be entitled, Listening to God's Warnings. But right now, we're going to have a beautiful song sung by uh, Bob Eli, and the song is entitled, My All in All. my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my in my cross my shame rising again I bless your name you are my all in all when I fall down you pick me up when I am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all Jesus us, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus. Worthy is your name, and his name is worthy. We're going to now have a song sung by Eugenia Clark, and it's a beautiful song entitled, He Has Forgiven Me. It's like to think of things I have done and want to run and hide my head in shame. I know what it's like to really hurt someone and feel no sense of sorrow their pain but I know what it's like to have enough of my disgrace and find because of Jesus blood my sins can be raised he has forgiven From his memory by the blood of the Lamb of Calvary he has forgiven me do you know it's like for God 
but to be your friend to talk to him with nothing in between and do you know what it's like when the day comes to an end to sleep in peace because your heart is it's like when the accuser comes your way to look him squarely in the eye with confidence and say he has forgiven the blood of the Lamb of Calvary. Eugenia for that wonderful song. I'm going to read from the scriptures this evening, starting with James chapter 2 verse 13. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And 2 Corinthians 5 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. And Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books, according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. I pause there because of that, that message that it might sink in. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We ask that as Pastor Horn comes forward to preach this message, listening to God's warning, that all who hear it would hear it and understand it. 
and allow it to work in their lives. Lord, may people hear this message and be changed by it according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Bob. God's warnings. Recently, I've been studying the book of Jeremiah. My heart has been stirred as I sense the burden of this devout, very sensitive prophet. He was called the weeping prophet because he saw what God was going to have to do to a wayward nation that was not responding to his word. Jeremiah prophesied to a people with a glorious heritage. Their history was the wonder of the world. Under God, they had broken the bonds of Pharaoh. They had risen to one of the major world powers, and the nations of the earth had honored their skills, for they had many, and their proudness. They, dis they boasted such names as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, David, and Solomon, great men of God. They produced this nation of Israel, poets, kings, judges, and musicians, their architects and their masons and their silversmiths were one of the world's greatest revelations and gifts of the world itself. They had it all, but they didn't listen to God. They had given the existing nations codes of living, statutes of law, which had never been excelled and have never been excelled to this very day. God had blessed them. And Jeremiah preached in the streets of Jerusalem that they were in a great time of prosperity, but in their prosperity, they forgot God. They forgot God. Silver was brought from Tashus and gold from Apas. God does not judge man on a momentary standard. He weighs them upon the scales, and he weighed them upon the scales of justice and integrity. And they failed. They failed. We can have everything in the world and yet be a failure. Israel religiously had become apostate. All you have to do is read about it. Militarily, she was vulnerable to attack by her enemies. And she was many times defeated because she didn't go God's way. Morally, she was destroying herself with her lust and her greed. Do you see the parable or the parallel between Israel and America today? We have a glorious heritage in America. The pilgrims at Plymouth Rock, and we've just celebrated that. Washington at Valley Forge on his knees. Our founding fathers on their knees at the first Congressional Congress. The gaunt Lincoln praying in an hour of crisis. What a heritage we have in the history of America. All these are part and parcel, my friends, of a great American heritage. And a little more than 200 years have passed, a little over 200 years have passed, and we have grown to be the first-rate power among the world family of nations. We are a powerful nation, yet our prosperity has not brought things that we need the most. Prosperity cannot bring you peace of mind. Prosperity cannot give you security. Man needs an inner peace, and man doesn't have an inner peace. He goes to psychiatrists. He goes to the hospital with all kinds of physical problems that have been caused by a restless heart and a restless mind. The words of James in James 5.1 are appropriate for these times and for the times that we spoke of with Israel. 
It says there, go to now, you rich man, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. You've sought everything but God. You've sought for riches, and you have riches when you compare it with the other countries of the world. You've sought for all kinds of security in many different ways, and you can have all that security. But we still fear for our lives. We even with the security we have. Jeremiah's message then to Israel is a message to America tonight. The truth that he uttered goes straight to the core of the needs of America today. When God called him, he said this in Jeremiah 1, 5, Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you to be a prophet of the nations. And here is Jeremiah being a prophet to the nations, knowing what God is going to do if Israel does not repent. Knowing what God is going to do as uh, men of God preach today if America does not repent. This prophet, the weeping, compassionate prophet, was crushed by the godlessness in the world today. And any pastor and any Christian, my friends, should be crushed at the ungodly spirit that is in America today. The world is not repenting of their sins. People are looking for a revival, but unless it begins in the church and goes into the world, no revival will come and there will be God's hand of destruction. The message is entitled, God's warnings are to America and to the world, even as it was to Israel. History is recorded so that we can avoid the errors of the past, but it doesn't seem like we do. Israel fell and was led into Babylonian captivity because she ignored, she ignored the voice of history as well as the voice of Jeremiah the prophet who said thus saith the Lord when a pastor truly preaches the word of God and says this is what God says when a nation says we don't want to retain God in our minds we don't want to live by God's word and we don't even believe God's word that nation is being prepared for judgment and it's a justice that only will happen because people have rejected Christ. Today we are in the precise vision, uh, precise day experience as Jeremiah's day and if we turn a deaf ear in America to Almighty God and shut our eyes to the truths of history you know, history isn't even taught in our schools today, our public schools today. They don't know anything about the history of America. And if you mention it to them, is that there? <coughs> My friends, if we don't know history and we don't know how God worked in America in the past, we will ma make the same mistakes that many other cultures have made and ended up in being judged by Almighty God. What is God as he looks at this situation feeling? He is grieved. Where in America has grieved God? What would Jeremiah say to this? First, America has grieved God by going into idolatry. Other gods. We worship the God of television. We worship the God of pleasure. We worship the God of sex. We worship anything that is not God we worship is another God. We are idol worshipers in America today for the most part, and in some churches they are idol worshipers. Many are in the position of Israel. They claim Jehovah God as their deity, and they practice the worship of idols. The Bible says, Yea, upon every high hill 
and every green tree you bow down as a harlot, worshiping other gods. When God is not the center of our worship, we have other gods that we're worshiping. And what a picture of America today, worshiping other gods while giving lip service to God Almighty. Jeremiah had a word for these idolaters in Jeremiah 17, 5 and 6. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his God, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a scrub in the desert and shall not see any good. Second, I think Jeremiah would say that there is moral degeneration in America, America's literature, many of our films, and everything that we see in the papers and magazines is evil in many cases. Sex is glorified instead of ra reality in morality. Above all, it can, we can hear the voice of God's judgment on all of this when he says, shall I not avenge myself on a nation such as this? Shall I not punish them for these things? Billy Graham, when he was alive, said these words, if God does not punish America for her waywardness, then he has to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. For God punished them. Third, if Jeremiah were here today speaking, I believe he would talk about the lost sense of sin in America. Hasn't the word sin become almost taboo in America? Talk about people sinning and they say, well, everybody, everybody sins, but let's not talk about sin. And they actually do not understand that sin has invaded America and sin is against God. Sin has invaded many churches and sin is against almighty God. The Bible says, Behold, I will bring you judgment for saying, I have not sinned. When I don't put God first, I am sinning. When I don't pray for others that have hurt me, I am sinning. When I don't serve God with the full capacity God has given me to serve him, I am sinning. Sin isn't just these big things we think of as adultery and murder and all these things. Sin is anything that puts God second. God second. My friends, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. That is just as true today as when he said those words. The wages of sin is death. America is facing the same situation that Israel was facing. And uh, Israel said no to God. We will not bow down to God. Why do you think Jeremiah wept? The message was not received in his day, and God had to bring judgment. The message is not being received in many circles in America today, and God will have to bring judgment could judgment come to good old America? You bet it could. Be sure your sins will find you out, America. But there is something we can do about it. If my people will humble themselves and pray, and if they will seek my face, then I will heal their land. My friends, God wants God's people to be interceding for America today. And if we do that, instead of complain about everything that's going wrong in America, pray, pray, pray for America to repent as a nation, not just people, but as a nation, then God says he'll heal that land. If we will return to the God that founded these United States of America, then God will return to us and bless us. But if we do what Israel has done in the past, many times it seems, then 
we too will experience what Israel experienced. God is no respecter of nations. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you that there is a way out. God, you're warning America. You're warning God's people to get right with God. You're warning America to receive your son as their savior and follow the word of the living God. But there's so many deaf ears, Father, to that warning, even as they were in Israel. Father, wake up who you can and get who you can to commit to serving you in ways that are beyond what they are doing, in ways that will make others see the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and come to repentance in the way they have lived and repentance if they're lost in not receiving Christ. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, do you know if you died tonight or this day, any time you're seeing this broadcast that you'd go to heaven? You may be saying to me, I hope so. That's not good enough. If you don't know so, you either haven't been taught the word of God or you haven't received Christ as your Savior. So perhaps you haven't received Christ. That is what you must do right now. Don't delay. Say this prayer to God and mean it with all your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me my sins and send your Son into my life as my Lord and Savior. I commit to you the rest of my life, and I thank you that Jesus is my Savior right now. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Now help me, Lord God, to live a life that glorifies you and one that will be at least one person trying to turn the nation to you. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you as you journey in this wonderful faith. If you've received Christ as your Savior, please write us at the Bible Speaks, 40 Bel Bel Belvedere Street. Laconia, New Hampshire. That's 40 Belvedere Street, Laconia, New Hampshire. And uh, it's uh, very important that you remember the zip code like I just forgot. 03246. So I, I am glad that you have heard that with an imperfect pastor, but I can tell you this. The address is perfect. Once again, the Bible speaks 40 Belvedere Street, Lakeport, New Hampshire, zip code 03246. Have a great, great day.